Hey, what's going on everybody? It's ETA Prime back here again. Today we're going to be taking a look at the all new Menace Forum AD650i. This is their first mini ITX integrated motherboard to market and I believe they have a few more coming by the end of the year. And the term integrated motherboard can actually mean a lot, but with this one here, we've already got the CPU soldered to the board. 10 cores, 16 threads, and there's some really cool stuff going on with this, like the fact that it'll support up to 6 M.2 PCIe 3.0 M.2 SSDs, 3 on the rear, and they've also included an MXM board that also supports 3 more M.2 SSDs. But one of the best things about this little board is it's actually powered by a 19 volt power supply like you'd find with other mini PCs from this manufacturer and others. Taking a look around back, we've got those three M.2 slots, and I've been doing some testing with it so far. I've just got my M.2 already pre-installed with Windows on it. And by the way, there is a big heatsink panel that we can attach to the back once we have our M.2s in place. So yeah, mini ITX form factor. We've already got our CPU in place, 10 cores, 16 threads. You will have to add your own storage and RAM, and this supports dual channel DDR4 up to 3200 megahertz. We can also add two SATA 6 drives to this, given the ports we have on the unit. Taking a look at the I.O., around back here, we've got two full-size HDMI ports. We've also got USB 4 here. It will run at a Thunderbolt protocol up to 40 gigs if you want to run it like that. 2.5 gigabit Ethernet. We also have two USB 3.2 Gen 1 ports and two USB 3.2 Gen 2 ports around back here. Taking a look around back, you can see we've got three M.2 slots, and these will support PCIe 3.0 drives. You can run this in RAID 0, RAID 1, or RAID 5. But to add more storage to this, this board actually has an MXM slot. Now, uh, what I'm taking off right now is the M.2 cooler that they've included with the uh, MXM board that they have. I've also installed two M.2 drives right here, and theoretically, with this slot here, you could install an MXM GPU, and if the interest is there, I can definitely do it down the road, just let me know in the comments below. But really, what this thing is made for is just tons of storage in a super small form factor. Six M.2 PCIe 3.0 drives, and you can also add two SATA 6 gig drives. Now when it comes to the specs, for the CPU we've got the i7-12650H, 10 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.7 GHz. This will support up to 64GB of DDR4 running in dual channel at 3200 MHz. Integrated Intel UHD graphics with 64 execution units and this will run at 1.4 GHz. We can add those 6 M.2 NVMe drives, 2 SATA drives, and you can install Windows or Linux on this. I'm going to be running Windows 11 Pro with all of the testing you're going to see in this video. But now, I want to get this inside of a case, and since we're working with a mini ITX form factor, we can go really small with it, and pretty cheap. I picked this one up on Amazon for about $25, I'll leave a link in the description, I think it looks pretty good, and the fact that we actually don't need a full-fledged PC power supply here makes it very easy to choose a really small form factor case. Along with the motherboard, we do get some mounting hardware, we also get our SATA adapter, that way we can just plug it right into the board, we've got all of the hardware to mount our M.2 drives. I'm going to be adding 64 gigabytes of crucial RAM here, running in dual channel at 3200 megahertz. And I've already got my operating system drive installed. Now we just need to drop it right down in the case, get everything wired up. Once it's finished, it looks something like this. And yeah, it's definitely a really clean little build. Obviously, I didn't add any SATA drives, but this case here will support two 2.5-inch drives at the top. And around back, we've got access to all of our I.O. Alright, so here it is, all set up, ready to go. As you can see, we've got that 12th Gen i7. It's an H variant, so we've got 10 cores, 16 threads, up to 4.7. I actually thought I added 64 gigs of RAM, but it looks like I may have inserted a 32 and a 16. Either way, we've still got plenty here running at 3200 megahertz. And for the uh, GPU here, it's not Iris Graphics. It's actually Intel UHD with 64 execution units. I also installed two M.2 drives in the uh, free slots on that MXM board. Show right up just two 500 gigs and I actually plan on setting this up with much more. I've ordered some drives. I'd actually like to have this running as kind of a media server because with this CPU and GPU combo this does 4k video playback amazingly whether you want to stream it or from external or internal storage. I did take a look in the BIOS. Our fan curve is fully adjustable. We can also adjust the TDP but the base is 45 watts with a boost up to 90. 90 does seem a bit high but it is adjustable. We've got the power limit 1 and 2. I've never seen it hit 90. 
Sweet spot for this chip, in my opinion, is 65 watts, especially if you're going to be doing some gaming, and it can definitely handle some 720p games. You're not going to be doing newer AAA stuff at 1080p on this, but it really wasn't made for that. This is made for a great all-around desktop experience, whether you want to do some web browsing, document editing, some video playback, you could even do some photo editing here. And with tons of storage, to even SATA drive, setting this up as a little media playback device would work out really well. Now the first thing I wanted to do was head over to YouTube and check out some 4K video playback. This is a demo video I like to test just because it is 4K 60fps HDR. Turn stats for nerds on, make sure we're at a true 4K. And on the initial load in, you might get a couple drop frames, but this chip will truck through 4K video playback. I've always had really good luck with these Intel chips, even with the lower end Celeron 4105, 4K, 60 on those chips works great. I mean, they've done an amazing job with these UHD graphics when it comes to video playback. But like I mentioned, we don't have Iris XE graphics. We've got the UHD with 64 execution units. Either way, I still wanted to take a look at some PC gaming and emulation on this machine. And the first thing we have here is the Shadow of the Tomb Raider benchmark. So we're at 720p low settings with XESS set to balance. By the end of this run here, we actually had an average of 41 FPS. We've got OG Skyrim, always like to throw this in, especially on these Intel iGPUs. We're at 1080p low settings and unfortunately at all medium settings, we did get a few dips down into the mid 50s and I thought that would happen with only having 64 EUs. If this was using the 80EU or the 96EU Intel Iris Xe, then we could definitely get better performance, but it's not bad for what we have here. Moving over to CSGO, we're at 1080p, low settings, and I probably should have just taken this to medium and turned VSync on, just kind of lock it down at 60. But with a setup like this, we did get an average of 98 FPS. Now I wanted to move over to some emulation because this little setup definitely does an amazing job. God of War, Ghost of Sparta, definitely one of the harder ones to run for PSP. We're at 4x resolution and I am using the DirectX 11 back end. You could go with Vulkan, I mean they performed about the same, but I always just keep it with DirectX and these Intel iGPUs. So seeing how well this runs at 4x resolution, when it comes to the other easier to emulate PSP games, you're going to be able to breeze right through them. Moving over to some GameCube, using the Dolphin emulator, we've got F-Zero GX on the hardest track, 720p, DirectX 11. I didn't see a dip under 60 one time, and if you take a look at Afterburner up in the top left hand corner, you'll see it jump up to around 21 watts, which isn't that bad, and keep in mind, that's kind of separated between the CPU and GPU, so total there from that CPU, 21 watts to run this at 720p. And finally here, we've got some PS2 using PCSX2. We're at 1080p, Vulcan back in, Gran Turismo 4 running at 60. Even God of War 2 will run at 1080p, and you can see that we are pulling significantly more than we were with GameCube, and that's just how it is with PS2 emulation. I've seen this jump up to around 32 watts, especially with a harder to emulate game. But it can run them, and it runs them amazingly. Performance on the CPU side of things here with that i7-12650H is great, but obviously that iGPU does leave a little more to be desired. Now again, we've got that MXM slot, plus we've got USB 4, so you could always add an external GPU to this. Or if you come across a decent deal on an MXM GPU over on eBay, it'd be pretty cool to test that also. So overall, I think the Menace Forum AD650i is a really interesting little concept for a mini ITX board. You can go really small form factor with it, lots of storage, great for a little Plex server, a media playback server. Love the fact that we don't need a specific power supply for this, like a Pico. We can just plug in a 19 volt adapter. I was using a 120 watt adapter for an older mini PC that I had. Worked out just fine with this system. And we've also got that MXM slot, so if you do have access to an MXM GPU, it would work. I'd actually like to test it, and if anybody's interested, just let me know in the comments below. But uh, that's going to wrap it up for this video. If you want to learn a little more about the AD650i from Menace Forum, I'll leave some links to their official website. And like always, thanks for watching.